Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today we are going to talk about what is a breeding value, what is a genetic value and that means we are going to talk today about breeding and selection and these two terms are very important for uh, the whole course for you to understand all the main conceptual ideas and today's problem is or today's question which component would you select on and here is the formula probably this reminds you of the formula from your biology course in high school where you remember phenotype equals to genotype plus environmental effect but this formula is slightly modified here we have uh, one component that stands for the additive value and non-additive value let's talk about each of them in turn in short words the breeding value is going to be the value of the genes to a progeny and the genetic value is going to be the value of genes to self in other words it includes non-additive effects such as dominance which cannot be passed on to the progeny I understand that many of you are still confused so let's talk in more detail about each term here the difference between genetic and breeding value is largely dominance deviation so what is a dominance deviation from your school textbooks you probably already know conceptual idea of incomplete dominance for example if we have in a gene pool two alleles of the same gene so variants of the same genes slightly different but the same gene so we call them alleles let's say one would be allele a1 and another is going to be a2 so with two alleles a1 and a2 we can get three different genotypes a1 and a1 a1 and a2 and a2 and a2 genotypes if we have in a gene pool a1 and a2 alleles we can get these three genotypes in deployed organism now let's say that allele a1 in plants would produce red pigment and it is obvious that plants with two alleles a1 two normal alleles would produce uh, flowers with uh, which is going to be red so let's say that allele a2 would be defective allele which doesn't produce any pigment at all and genotype a2 a2 means two defective alleles in a plant and such plant would produce flowers which are going to be white so no pigment at all and genotype a1 a2 have to be intermediate intermediate between red and white is going to be pink this was fast review of what you probably already know from your school textbooks but in breeding and selection we use different concept of uh, incomplete dominance so forget what you have learned before and let me introduce different conceptual idea that we are using in animal or plant breeding and selection how we understand dominance no dominance and incomplete dominance so what is a dominance deviation let me show you three examples no dominance incomplete dominance and complete dominance each line here stand for not a chromosome but razor relationship between genotype and phenotype so let me explain in detail somewhere in the middle is going to be intermediate phenotype and here is going to be two extremes so take a look for example if we have no dominance model so we will have genotype a1 a1 here genotype a1 a2 here and genotype a2 a2 here so what this picture means that means that uh, we have one phenotype second phenotype and third phenotype and three genotypes also as you see and genotype which consists of one allele a1 and one allele a2 
would be intermediate phenotype between these two extreme phenotypes. In incomplete dominance, the picture is going to be slightly different from no dominance model. Here we have genotype A1, A1 here, A2, A2 genotype here, and genotype A1, A2 here. So genotype A1, A2 would be phenotypically more similar to one of these extreme genotypes and phenotypes. So this is going to be example of incomplete dominance. And what is a complete dominance? Here's another example. Again, if we take that A2 allele is incompletely dominant over the A1 allele. Now let's take a look at another example. So A1, A1 genotype here. And in complete dominance, we will have genotypes A1, A2, and A2, A2 genotype, that they are going to be phenotypically the same. So we would see three such pictures. One more time, no dominance genotype, which is heterozygous, would be intermediate between two extreme phenotypes. So would resemble actually what we see in textbooks examples as incomplete dominance. So would phenotype would be intermediate between these two. Incomplete dominance actually would be example when a genotype which would be heterozygous phenotypically would be more close to another uh, extreme phenotype, but is not going to be the same what would be closer is not going to be intermediate. And complete dominance would be when heterozygous genotype would be the same as one of the extreme phenotypes. One more time, this picture represents dominance deviation. So dominance deviation belongs to genetic value, the value of genes to self. It includes non-additive effects such as dominance. So let me underline this. In other words, for example, here is phenotype. And it cannot be passed to the progeny because this is a set of two alleles in one locus. And only one allele in each locus can be passed to the progeny. But the whole set cannot be passed. The whole set only can be passed to the progeny if an animal propagates by cloning. And of course, in breeding and selection, we are not cloning animals. Now let me explain in more details what is a breeding value. Breeding value is the value of the alleles that each progenitor can transfer to its progeny. Here is example. Let's say that we have two alleles, A1, which say adds 10 points to a trait and A2, which deducts 10 points from the trait. So this is just uh, some fictional points. And then in this case, uh, breeding value of the genotype A1, A1 would be 20 points. And uh, of the genotype A1, A2 would be plus 10, minus 10, so breeding value would be zero. And genotype A2, A2 would add minus 10, minus 10 would be minus 20 points of the breeding value. Of course, you should understand that one allele have to be inherited from one parent and another allele have to be inherited from the other parent. Now we are ready to return to our formula and to our question, which component would you select on? And of course, as I said, environment is not inheritable. Progeny cannot inherit environment from the parents. And also, as you already have learned, progeny cannot inherit unique set of combinations of alleles present in parents. So what we call non-additive traits. As breeders, we especially interested in additive 
genetic traits and we understand that most of the genetic traits are additive in nature where many uh, lasci, many genes, many alleles affect one trait and each allele can add something to the trait or uh, can affect in other way uh, deducting from the trait. Let's say this is going to be a weight, so one allele can add something to this trait, another can have negative effect on this trait. And when we have many loci, many alleles, this is um, going to be a combination of these alleles that would specify the trait and we can, of course, by means of breeding and selection, cause shift in allelic frequencies in a progeny by selecting parents. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.